In this example, we are going to use Gauss's law to find the electric field produced by conducting sphere, and the sphere is charged positively. We want to find an electric field outside the sphere and inside the sphere. Now, let's start with inside. Uh, at the, the, we consider this radius of our spherical shell, we call it R0. So we need to find electric field at R1 and then R2. For R1, means when the radius is less than the radius of the sphere, what do we see inside? The charges are outside. There is no charges inside. So our electric field, our electric flux, it will be Q enclosed over epsilon zero by definition. So do we have a charge inside? No, there is no uh, the, the positive charges that they are here, but we are calculating electric flux or electric field inside. So our Gaussian area it will be inside. So the electric flux will be the integral of ADA equals Q enclosed in this case is zero over epsilon zero. That means there is no electric flux. Well, this means there is no electric field when the radius is less than the radius of the spherical uh, shell. Now, let's find the electric field outside the spherical shell. This, this is the, the origin of the sphere, and this is the radius R2. And this, we'll call it R0. Now, by definition, Gauss's law says the integral on enclosed area EDA equals Q enclosed over epsilon zero. The enclosed area is the dashed area you see outside. So this dashed area has the total charges plus Q, the integral EDA equals Q enclosed over epsilon zero. Now this EDA is, uh, remember this DA is the area element times the normal to this area. If I take this element of area, I call it dA. The normal to this dA, we call it n, is the vector perpendicular to the area element. And also the electric field is in the same direction, because if I want to calculate the electric field here, it will be away from the charge, it will be in the same direction as the normal area. That means this term it will be just E dA cosine of theta. Theta here will be zero because the angle between the normal and the electric field vector is zero. The cosine of zero is one. That means E dA is just uh, E dA is just E dA. Okay, so let me clean this now. We said our electric field also is constant at any point from here will be constant in magnitude. So I will just come out from the integral. It will be just dA, um, the E outside integral dA, which is Q over epsilon zero. The integral of this element of surface, uh, what will be? It will be the total surface. The total spherical surface, it will be just 4 pi. Remember this, we call it R2. This radius is R2. The same thing as this one. It will be 4 pi R2 squared equals Q over epsilon zero. That means the electric field will be just Q over 4 pi epsilon zero. This is R2, huh? B, epsilon zero, R2 squared. This is our electric field produced by a spherical conducting shell. Let's say if I have all this shell is solid conducting, solid conducting sphere, the same principle, 
all the charges that you see inside this conducting sphere it will go move toward the surface and this conducting sphere will stay empty from inside then it will be the same principle the electric field inside conducting sphere will be zero because all the charges they will be moved to the surface there is no charges inside the conducting sphere the electric field will be zero and outside the the sphere the electric field will be q over 4 pi epsilon zero r squared or r2 squared if i take this is call it r2 remember if i have thin spherical shell conducting shell or whole solid conducting sphere the principle is the same there is no charge inside the conducting sphere the charge will be placed on the surface of this conducting sphere the electric field inside will be zero the electric field outside this sphere will be q over 4 pi epsilon zero r squared r is the radius of gaussian surface.